Hey everyone, Mr. Macintosh here, and the very first Mac OS Ventura update is here, 13.0.1. In this video, I'm gonna go over everything that you're gonna to need to know about this update, plus some open core legacy patcher news and whether it's ready to go for your unsupported Mac next. Apple released the 13.0.1 Ventura update on November 9th. They also released an iOS 16.1.1 and iPadOS 16.1.1. There was no associated Monterey or Big Sur security update, and there was no Watch OS, TV OS, or audio OS update. Now, if you haven't upgraded to macOS Ventura yet, you're gonna wanna know about the brand new macOS Ventura upgrade system. Apple redesigned the upgrade system to be a lot more reliable, smaller, and faster. And this is what it looks like in software update for macOS Monterey, for example. So let's open that up and look at that live. If we open up system preferences, this is what we're gonna see. And you'll notice right off the bat, we'll see macOS Ventura 13.1, and we're ready to upgrade. And look at the size, 3.92 gigabytes compared to 12.5 gigabytes, which would be a normal upgrade. Now, keep in mind, this is only available for Mac OS Monterey 12.3 or newer. If you are on 12.2 Monterey or Big Sur or Catalina, you will only see the full 12 gigabyte update. So all you need to do is hit upgrade now and it'll download three gigabytes or four gigabytes or five gigabytes, depending on what version you're on, and you'll be on Mac OS Ventura faster than ever. Now, one important note here is, is that if you wanna be able to download the full installer like you have in the past, make sure that you don't do it this way because if, like if you wanted to install to a USB flash drive, an external drive, or a second partition, this right here will install onto your main Mac. It won't download the full installer, so that's one thing you want to keep an eye out. But wonder if you don't want to go to Ventura and you just want to install a Monterey update? Well, you got to click this more info button and that's where you'll see the Monterey update right here. So that's fine if you want to make the jump to Ventura. That's where you'll find the updates for Mac OS Monterey and Big Sur and Catalina. So if you're already on Mac OS Ventura 13.0, you want to be able to install the latest security update. How will you know and where is it at? Because the system settings is brand new for Ventura and it looks totally different. So first of all, the icon's the same and you will see the one dot here when you have a software update waiting. So just click on system settings and the first thing you'll see when you get in here is that this is totally redesigned. If you've already been in here and are familiar with it, that's great. But if you're not, you'll see software updates show up here when there's an update available and all all you need to do is click on it. It'll automatically check for updates one more time just to make sure there's nothing new since the last time it checked and then it will show you the available software update in here and this is the new interface. Now before you click on update now you click on more info to get more information about the update. You can see the version and then you can see the size but wonder if you wanted to see what's about the update. It doesn't show you yet. You actually have to go in here and click on it then it will show you the information about the update. So all you need to do is click on install now and it'll immediately give you the option to agree to the agreements. And if you have an Apple Silicon M1 or M2 Mac, you will be prompted for a volume owner password. So you'll type in your password of your main account here, and you do not need to be an administrator to be able to install software updates on Mac OS Ventura or Monterey or Big Sur. The first thing it's gonna do is download the update and immediately jump to the preparing mode. So there you go, you can see that it is 605 megabytes and it's gonna take a little bit of time and then it's gonna jump to the preparing section. After the download is complete, it's immediately gonna go into preparing mode. Now keep in mind, if you have the automatic updates installed, download new updates and install updates, this part of the preparing will be already already done and you'll just get a notification over here to restart. And that's where we can go in to talk about the second best feature about Mac OS Ventura for the first was the upgrade, the new and improved upgrade. The second is the faster software update installs for M1 and M2 Macs. After this preparing is done, the Mac will reboot and it will install the update in record time. We're talking under five minutes of installation time. So those days of where we're waiting 20 to 30 minutes to be able to install software updates, are gone on M1 and Mac OS Ventura. And this is such a wonderful feature. You're gonna to have to experience it to believe how fast this is. And again, you're normally, like I said, if you have this selected here to download one available, it's gonna do all this in the background. So you don't have to sit here and even wait for the preparing for 12 minutes. And there we go. The update has finished preparing. All we need to do is hit restart and the Mac will restart and install the update. Like how we are back up. That update was fast. Let's log back in here and finish the time. The time finished the installing the update at 11.55 p.m. So look at that. We basically started the preparation at 11.48 p.m. 
and not even at 1152 the preparation done and it took three minutes to install this update that's what i'm talking about this is the improved update process and it is absolutely fantastic and it is something that apple has needed to do for mac os for a long time and it's so great that it's here can't wait to see you try it out our demonstration Mac here today is a 2020 M1 MacBook Air. And the first thing we're gonna do is check the build version. So we'll go to terminal and do an SW version. And the build version is 22A400. That's a way to check that you're not on a beta version or something like that. And you think, hey, I'm on 13.01, but maybe there was a beta version before and that's the way that you double check. Now, one thing I wanted to show you real quick is that macOS Ventura also includes the rapid release updates. And there's a way that you can check that. And I wanna show you how to do that now. All you need to do is do SW or man SW version. And you can see that there's a brand new option here called product version extra. And that's how you can see if there's a rapid security update installed. So if we scroll down here, you can see product version extra A. So if Apple ever released a rapid security update for macOS Ventura, there will be an extra option A, B, or C in addition to the product version. These won't change like 13.0 or the product build, but the product version extra will. So let's take a look at what that looks like. And when it's blank, that means there's nothing. Now, if you saw an A here or a B or a C, that means that there is a security update. So I don't think that system is ready just yet for macOS Ventura, but when as soon as the first rapid security update releases is dropped, I'll make sure that you know about it. Now, one thing I always check on is the system firmware version and the OS loader version. Now, if you have a dual boot Mac and you load it in Big Sur or Monterey, the OS loader version will show whatever version you are on. So Monterey would be 7,000, but Mac OS Ventura is 8,000, and the system firmware version should be same across the board when it's updated, and I always keep an eye on those. And in the 13.0.1 update, the firmware for M1 was not updated and the OS loader version was not updated, but the T2 bridge OS update for Intel Max was updated and revved up. Also interesting is, is that Safari was not updated in this version either. Normally Safari has a vulnerability in it, but this was not touched and there was no WebKit vulnerabilities in the 13.0.1 update. Apple did release a full installer for 13.0.1, but keep note, if you're checking the app version, when you click on the full installer and then get info, it says 18.0.2, and that's the same as 13.0. Hopefully with the next release, they will rev this up so you can tell the difference quickly without having to drill all the way into the installer. IPSW for M1 and M2 was also released to be able to restore those devices. Now let's talk about the security content of the 13.0.1 update. When we go to the product security page, we can take a look at those. And we scroll down, we can see there is two fixes here with two different CVEs. And we're also looking at if these issues and vulnerabilities have already been exploited in the wild. And there is no note here that says that has happened. So that's not to say that there is, but Apple is telling us that they are not aware of any reports that this is being used in the wild yet. But then again, when we look at the impact, a remote user may be able to cause an unexpected app termination or arbitrary code execution. So that's one thing that you will want to keep an eye on because anybody on 13.0 will be vulnerable to each one of these. What else is included in the 13.0.1 update? Well, bug fixes. I mean, if Apple's engineers are going to take the time to squash these bugs, and sometimes they're difficult, put them in here. Wonder if thousands of users are experiencing these bugs. Let them know what it is so they can see that and know. And it shows that your engineers are fixing things. There's nothing to hide here. I understand if you're gonna do this for macOS monitoring, Big Sur, all oh, this, this provides the simplest patch notes, right? But this is a brand new latest operating system. If there's some bugs fixes in there, please Apple, we wanna see these notes. So when I talk about Apple not giving us the bug reports, right, on what the bug fixes are in these updates. Apple is being more transparent in other areas. And one of those examples is software updates and a new Apple security research blog. And this is great to see because Apple has always been tight lipped with these things. So seeing this blog and the information about it with new security bounty program updates is absolute wonderful news. And seeing Apple being able to blog about security things like this is exactly what Project Zero does at Google and some other companies do. So this is a positive. And another positive is, is the new document about security updates. When we talk about the three operating 
operating system versions that Apple supports now, Ventura, Monterey, and Big Sur. Catalina is dead if you didn't know already. They usually support three operating systems. They finally put it in writing here in this document that they only keep all known security issues addressed in the latest version. So let's read this. Because of dependency on architecture and system changes to any current version of Mac OS, for example, Mac OS 13 Ventura, not all known security issues are addressed in previous versions, for example, Mac OS 12 Monterey or Mac OS Big Sur. So they still release security updates, but not all the security patches are patched for those previous operating systems. And they say the dependency on architecture and system changes because some of those fixes might require re-architecture of the operating system itself. And they're finally letting us know here that if you want to be the safest possible, you have to be running on the latest operating system. And it's great that Apple finally put this in writing so we can all point to this if anybody has any questions in the future. Now let's talk about OpenCore Legacy Patcher for your unsupported Macs on Ventura from 2012 to 2016. If you got a Mac that is supported by OpenCore Legacy Patcher on 13.0, you're ready to go to 13.0.1, but always go to the GitHub page and take a look at the latest releases section just to make sure that there's no issues that have popped up. And I've looked around and I've tested it on this 2013 Mac Pro and I do not see any issues so far. Working very well, so we're looking good so far on that but again always check that and then make sure you're on the latest version of open core legacy patcher before you begin the installation process so all you need to do to update is to go into system settings and then click on software update once we're in here in general and then software update and then you'll see the update right in here and you can click on install now Keep in mind, you're not going to see that small Delta update that the supported machines see because when we're running these post install root patches, the system sealed snapshot has to be unsealed to be modified to add those drivers back in. So whenever the software update sees that you're not in a sealed snapshot, it will offer you the 11 gigabyte update. No big deal though. It will still install fine. And once that's done, the system will come back up. You'll log in and the launch statement will kick off for OpenCore Legacy Patcher and you should see this. OpenCore Legacy Patcher has detected that you're running without root patches and would like to install them. And then all you need to do is click on OK and then the root patches will install automatically from the latest version and then it'll prompt you to restart and that's it, you're all set. So OpenCore Legacy Patcher and 13.0.1 Ventura are looking really great right now. Let me know in the comments how the upgrade went for you. Now on to my recommendation, should you install the Ventura 13.0.1 update? When it comes to this, I usually look at whether it fixes small bugs and it might not even have anything to do with your Mac, or it fixes major security issues that were big enough to deploy to millions of Mac OS Ventura users. So in this case, with these security fixes, I recommend installing to keep your Mac safe. You'll notice that my update videos will contain a lot more deeper pieces in Mac OS. And you might think, well, wait a minute, there was only two security updates in here. But if you looked at all the things that we talked about, things are changing. And even though Apple didn't put anything in the bug notes, you'll notice that I went over multiple things that were different and were changed that Apple might look at and be like, that's not even a big deal. And that's what I usually include in my videos. Could I add more things that you want to hear about? Is Should I cut some pieces out that you might not be interested in? I'm always looking at your feedback and I always truly appreciate it. Let me know in the comments below. And I wanted to thank all my viewers. And if you want to follow me on Twitter, classic2 underscore Mr. Mac. And I wanted to really thank all my Patreon members. You guys are absolutely amazing. And I truly appreciate you. And we'll catch you in the next video. Thanks.